Learning Prospect, welcome to RTB 2021 for January 18th. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've had a great day so far. Texts for today are, are Genesis um, 18, I'm sorry, Genesis 19, uh, then Nehemiah 8, Matthew 18, and Acts 18. So let's uh, talk through these pretty quickly. Uh, so first of all, in Acts 18, we have the beginning of Paul's second mis missionary journey after his visit uh, to Corinth, where he was serving as a kind of as a tent maker there for a little while, founded the church there, and then he returned uh, to Antioch, uh, and then he was sent out again on a missionary journey uh, right after that. Uh, then uh, we have in, let's go back to the other side of the canon, to Genesis 18, we have, or Genesis 19, we have the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and of course, once again, this shows God's uh, how seriously God takes uh, sin, and um, we see um, a, a story as well that will become kind of a model of a later story in the book of Judges, so kind of hold the story of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah in the back of your mind uh, when you get to Judges 19. Uh, and then in Matthew, uh, let's skip over, on over to there, to Matthew 18, we have a number of different uh, teachings on the part of Jesus. Uh, but one more famous one uh, is uh, the story or the teaching that he has in Matthew uh, 18, verses 15 through 20. If you remembered a few days ago when we were discussing Matthew 16, I uh, mentioned that uh, Jesus only mentions the, the church twice uh, in the Gospels. And one was in Matthew 16, the other is in Matthew 18, right here. Uh, this is a text that's often quoted. Uh, on Wednesday nights and, uh, and Sunday nights, sometimes when we don't have as many people at church, uh, where two or three are gathered, there I am, there midst. Uh, but really the context of Matthew 18 here is the context of church discipline. So what happens when uh, you have somebody who's involved in, in, um, in open and unrepentant sin? Uh, will you approach that person uh, in private? Uh, and if he listens to you, that you've won, the, won your brother, Jesus says, but if he doesn't listen to you, uh, then you take two or three witnesses with you. And the reason is that the, in that context, by the mouth of two or three people, uh, a, um, a fact is confirmed. And there he quotes from the Old Testament regarding that. And if he refuses to listen then, uh, then uh, he is to be brought, the person is to be brought before the church. Um, and then... Uh, Jesus talks about the, the authority that they have to, to do this, um, and, it's, and it's the authority that Jesus himself gives to the church to, uh, to, to discipline uh, for the means of restoration uh, when somebody is involved in that kind of open and unrepentant sin. And that's where the two or three are gathered in my name comes in, because uh, if those two or three people approach that person, uh, then... Um, then Jesus's authority is, is with them. Um, you also have some, some beautiful teachings on Jesus on the, uh, the 99 plus one of the sheep. It uh, shows Jesus's great love for uh, his people. Uh, and it's the will of the Father who is in heaven that uh, not one of these little ones uh, perish. Uh, some, some of the some beautiful teachings on the heart of the Father. Uh, as Jesus is expressing that, and also some, um, some important teaching on, on forgiveness in this text as well. And then finally, in Nehemiah 8, is one of my favorite texts in, in uh, the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, probably my favorite in the books of those two books, at least. Uh, it's where Ezra gets up uh, and for real, probably for the first time, reads on a large scale the, the law for the people. Uh, and Basically, we're talking about the when we're talking about the law, we're talking about the the Pentateuch, and he's reading this from the beginning to the end. Uh, and as he's reading, uh, they're translating it so to give sense to the people. In other words, they're explaining it as they go along. Um, and the people are cut to the quick. They are uh, they hear the word of the Lord proclaimed, and it causes them to um, to repent of their of their sins. And um, I think this is true of pretty much any revival of God's people that's always going to be based uh, in, the, uh, in, in the, the preaching and proclamation and the explanation and the application of God's words uh, to the life of, of his people. 
And as they hear and truly hear and understand uh, through ultimately in the New Testament, through the work of the Spirit, uh, that, uh, that mysterious uh, work of the Spirit through his word brings forth repentance, even, even as we see in the book of Ezekiel, for instance, in Ezekiel 37, where it's the Spirit and the word that come together to bring about new life um, to those dry bones in the Valley of Dry Bones. So great text uh, for today, uh, this day, January 18th. Hope you have a great rest of the day.